Hi, welcome to the It's Time for Breakthrough podcast, where we dive into topics on freedom and inner healing, all from the perspective of staying connected to yourself, to others, and to the Lord, and knowing that right here, right now, it really is time for breakthrough. I'm your host, Cassily, and let's jump right in. Welcome back to the It's Time for Breakthrough podcast. I'm your host, Cassily, and I'm so excited for our episode today. Um, I am here with Scott Smith, um, who is one of our ministers here at the Transformation Center, and he carries a passion for people to see freedom in their life and breakthrough in the way that God originally designed them to live. And so I am so excited for what we get to talk about today. I believe our topic is something that everyone can benefit from whether you are young to old um, and something that is valuable in our tool belt as everyday people living in relationships and navigating what that looks like and so today we get to talk about um, debrief and how to listen well and ask good questions and what all of that looks like and how to really apply it to our lives and our relationships and how to use that to not just be a um, passive bystander but an active participant in the relationships we have in our lives and so Scott welcome to the podcast thank you it's good I'm to be here I'm so excited that you're here I'm excited um, to be here and can you just give us a brief little rundown of who you are yep. how you're here at the Transformation Center and yeah what your life is like here well um, my relationship with the Transformation Center started in 2009 when my wife and I both got sozos when we were visiting here mm -hmm. and we were so rocked by that that we had to learn it and we went home and we got trained in sozo we started in our church in Tulsa Oklahoma mm -hmm. and have been doing it ever since uh, the second thing we did that is affecting today is that we moved to South Africa mm -hmm. in uh, 2014 and we were there till 2018. Oh. So we got to live in another culture for four years. Mm -hmm. And then we came back and we decided if we have to come back to the States, which we didn't want to, but the circumstances <laughs> were such that we had to come back. Yeah. We said we want to live in Reading and be a part of, of Bethel. And mm -hmm. uh, gratefully, I got hired at the Transformation Center. So I get to use Sozo, and pastoral counseling and now mm -hmm. debriefing especially for missionaries and uh, military people wow i love it that's amazing yeah i love it so just to dive right in can you just tell us what is debrief and why is that important for us to know how to do it and what it is yeah well i'd say first of all it's important that we all have a need to be heard hmm. and that's true for everyone but debrief is a special uh, category in that people who have gone through some kind of pretty traumatic experience. Yeah. Um, it could be you've uh, lived through an earthquake, um, you lived through a terrorist attack, mm -hmm. uh, you were a military vet, um, or you lived in a third world country for a while as a missionary. Mm -hmm. All of those require a special kind, Require I don't know if it's required, but mm -hmm. it, it's good if that person can experience a kind of listening with another individual or group where they've really been heard mm -hmm. and they get to process out loud what happened to them with yeah. the goal being a resilience where you get to keep going in life and life still makes sense yeah that's right. interesting that's kind yeah. of it in a nutshell I'd say. yeah in a nutshell yeah that's so good um i have heard you say that typically people who need debrief are the last people to know that they need it yeah. So can you chat a little bit about who who are the, you kind of mentioned it already, but who are the types of people, how do you know if you need to be debriefed? Yeah, well, um, if you have been through anything I mentioned, mm -hmm. you need to be debriefed. But mm -hmm. usually the reason people don't think that they need to is they, we just have this thing about us where we just say, well, um, I don't know exactly why that happened, but I guess it was supposed to, and I'm just going to put up with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really need. And when most people try to talk about those things yeah. with just their friends, mm -hmm. their friends don't have the capacity to hear it. Yeah. So they go, well, maybe, maybe it's not necessary to talk about it. Wow. But some other reasons would be military people in particular will say, I did this for my country, mm -hmm. and I took a vow with my team. So I don't need to come back here and talk about this. I, I just did what was expected of me. Yeah. In fact, if I debrief, I'm kind of pampering myself. Some of my teammates were killed 
and here I am, so I don't deserve to do this. A missionary can do something really similar where they say, yeah. I picked up my cross and I just uh, did what I felt like the Lord wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was very hard on me and I paid a high price, but that's just part of it. I don't need to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think we can grow in capacity? As people, if we're in support of people who who were in the military, who were missionaries, how do you think we, as the other side of that, can mm -hmm. grow in capacity for being able to listen to those types of people with those experiences? Yeah, I, I think that a couple of things for all of us to be better listeners would be we're used to listening thinking that either this isn't going to go very long, Hmm. Um, or I'm going to be able to help you fix it real quickly. Hmm. Yeah. Um, or I'm going to give you advice on why you shouldn't feel so bad and how you should just get over it and let's go on. We And I think so on our side of it is to learn that it isn't about us and the discomfort of hearing about that and, and that experience. But it's about mm -hmm. the person that needs to be debriefed mm -hmm. and that you're really serving them to not try to fix them. You're not judging yeah. them. But you're really listening, and you yeah. want to hear their story, and you want to give them. The, the, a big word is unhurried. Mm -hmm. They need to have an unhurried time where they yeah. can just start to unpack what happened, and mm -hmm. they are looking in your eyes and going, "Are you falling asleep? Are you checking your watch? Yeah. Do you want to go get ice cream or what?" And so yeah. they, they're very sensitive. Does anybody want to hear my story? Is yeah. it worth hearing? So yeah. for us to even become aware of that and go, I know that's what they need. So I'm just going to work hard at really being an empathetic listener. Yeah, that's good. And I think often there's people don't care what you have to say right. until they know that you care about them. Right. And so yeah. in that showing the simplicity of like, I look you in the eye and I care about you mm -hmm. and really learning how to live like Jesus in an unhurried way. Of Jesus sat with people when they were in their mess right and when they were right in the middle of it and yeah. not hey I'm almost done with my mess yeah I'm in the middle and I have no way out and he sat with them Can you know what an, ex an amazing example of where he did that was in the road to Emmaus story yeah because he, th these two disciples had just witnessed losing their master and mm -hmm. probably seeing him crucified that horrific death on yeah. the cross and then being a part of all the be bewildered mm -hmm. discipleship group and for some reason they go off seven miles to Emmaus mm -hmm. and everyone knows that story where Jesus shows up but they don't know it's him yeah and there's they said something like are you the only one mm -hmm. that doesn't know what has just happened in Jerusalem Hmm. Now, in about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes from now, Jesus is going to say, Oh, you of little faith, how have you not believed the prophets yeah. and everything that was said about this? But before he did that, he said, Oh, what things happened? Yeah. And if you read the text, he let them go on and on and on about everything that happened to Jesus yeah. and everything that everyone's talking about believing that he didn't know anything about it. He could have stopped them immediately and they said, you don't need to talk about that. It's me. I'm yeah. here. And and let's just get on with it. And no, it was important that they could talk before mm -hmm. he talked. Yeah. He yeah. took the time to... He knew everything already. Yeah. And he still listened. So can you speak to how, even if we think we have a way to like... If I've seen your situation and I... And like, I, oh, I've seen this before. I know kind of what this is like. Right. I know the typical, you can't put people in an ABC formula, but it's right. similar enough. How do you kind of resist that temptation of, oh, I've seen this before. I've heard this before. I have a way, I have almost a solution for you, but kind of holding that back just to listen. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I think maybe part of that is that if I have that attitude, it's still kind of about me hmm. and the need to use my gift and to see this thing come to a resolution yeah. and you know be able to pat myself on the back that they got healed or they got yeah. really helped from the session but i have to turn it back around and say but what does this what does that person need yeah. not what do i need hmm. and the other thing i have to think about is we're not in a hurry yeah 
So if I give them a 90-minute debrief session and I don't do anything in that session but ask good questions Mm -hmm. and listen reflectively and I listen empathetically, um, and we get to the end of the session, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't introduce Sozo or I didn't try to give them advice or anything. Mm -hmm. That was a good session. Yeah. And it was just the beginning. And Mm -hmm. it, it, like you said, if they know I care then they might want to say, what could we do next? Because yeah. I've, I've been able to sort of unload and unpack. Yeah. But most of the time, people that do uh, debriefs from the kind of things we're talking about, yeah. they usually say, I think I need more. I think I needed to consider a sozo or yeah. s- some other kind of inner healing ministry because it was great to be able to talk about it, but I want to go further. Yeah. So what I'm kind of hearing you say is that debrief is not built to patter on egos as the listener, but to really give space for people to be heard. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a big deal. That's amazing. And and we're all tempted to do that thing of thinking, Mm -hmm. I I either want to fix you quickly or I'm looking for the exit. I just can't do this. I mean, that part of that's our culture. Mm-hmm. We have a very short attention span, and to to re- I mean, I got s- some training with Le Roche, and they are a international leader in debriefs there in mm-hmm. in Switzerland, and they do debriefs that last for a week. Wow! So they will actually take f- uh, five to seven days with a person mm-hmm. and just let them unpack lots of different aspects of what they went through. Yeah. So unhurry ourselves unhurry yeah and sort of settle in to hear the story and to understand that when a person can unpack with another human being Mm -hmm. who's listening it's amazing that they know they've been heard and they know that what they uh here's a word um abreation that's a it's a new word that for me it's Mm -hmm. in the debrief world is where they as they're talking with you they may sing say things like I forgot all about this until yeah. we were talking. It just came up out of my subconscious. They may not say it like that, yeah. but it's coming up. They buried it, and they mm-hmm. didn't realize it. Yeah. And so there's something beautiful that happens where you give a person a chance to unpack in an unhurried way. Mm-hmm. And and uh, who see, we get to see where that's going to go next. Yeah. Be one. Uh, there was a part of Moses' law for military people. When people came back from battle, it says, these are instructions for men who have killed another person. Hmm. And they went, there was an instruction set of things to do for seven days before hmm. they were allowed to go back into the community. Yeah. And the, if you read the things that they had to do, it didn't, it wouldn't have taken seven days to do those things. Yeah. But you think, well, there's a lot of time to sit and talk, and there's yeah. a lot of time to, to debrief. Yeah. That's just my, it, is, it doesn't say that, but that's my take on it. That's your take on it. Yeah. That's so good. Because it leaves a space to be unhurried. And, yes. And in that space, you find, like, remembrance of, mm-hmm. I, I think the Last Supper was so slow. Mm-hmm. And I think it was the most unhurried thing because it made you remember wow, even never something of that. that they hadn't they didn't they didn't have the chance to remember it yet, but they would. Yeah. And so remembering Jesus took he said, Take the bread, it is my body. Right. Do yeah. this in remembrance oh, I hadn't of me. Of that. Yeah. And so I think in that it's we're remembering what is done, good and bad, right. of the cross was is good in its fruit but was bad in its action and so when we take time to remember yes it it brings it up to put it in the box of this was good i can learn from this and this was bad i can heal from this yeah and and i think it's a beautiful opportunity to get to love people really well yeah of being able to listen to them and what an honor it is to be able to sit with people in their in their pain and in moments they may even not remember well when you say in their pain i think the other thing is that it's my theory that close to a hundred percent of anyone who's gone through something traumatic Mm -hmm. concludes internally they may not tell anybody but they're concluding internally that somehow it's their fault Hmm. that they've done something wrong they believe something wrong 
there's something there's some flaw in their character and that's why that happened to them hmm. and that's one of the reasons a debrief is so powerful because yeah. you can start to let that get unearthed yeah because there's lies in there yeah that need to be healed yeah that's so interesting i love it i love debrief me i spent the a summer um, in between going to college and coming to Bethel's ministry school and in a wonderful land I love in Turkey and we were just there for the summer and we came back and the organization we went with um, had a space for us for like four to five days it was our debrief time yes and we were on a campus all together and they one of the things they talked about often was we create this space because there will be people where you go back wherever it is that don't get it that's right and people who don't really in all honesty want to sit with you and listen to your story right. and so they prepared our hearts for that's the reality awesome. of hey they're with the people who get it talk to them about it and the people who don't yes learn how to give them an answer that they want to love because often we would found with People who ask you questions most of the time don't actually want an answer. Right. And so when in the middle of finding we had an answer for this is what is my short answer for someone who I really feel doesn't really want an answer. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of middle ground of you want an answer but you want it you're kinda of in a hurry. Yeah. And then we had the okay, these are the points I wanna hit with the people who aren't yeah. hurried yet. Yeah. And what I found in that is it protected my heart. Right. in not getting disappointed and not going to a place of no one wants to hear, nobody cares, right. and just settling into the reality that some people don't, they they ask because it's polite. And in the culture I'm from, it's, well, how are you? I'm great, great. And that, you don't really yes. care. It's an auto response. Right. And so I found that it helped protect my heart from disappointment. Yes. Yeah. And can you talk about a little bit of how do you protect your heart from disappointment in the midst of a debrief in in spaces where people really you may not find people who want to listen to you and yeah. when is there a time if that's it to to reach out to someone outside of your network for a debrief session yeah well hopefully um there are more and more of us that are going to get really good at this yeah but in the meantime i well i wanted to just say We've gotten really good in the body of Christ, uh, kind of like the military. We're really good at motivating people to go out. <laughs> and we're great at giving them hope and giving them finances and yeah. out they go. And we still have a ways to go in bringing them back. Yeah. And reincorporating them back into the community. Yeah. But um, it, this is a very uh, real deal. I mean, for us, when we came back on furloughs from our short time, I mean, compared to some missionaries, four yeah. years is some people would consider that short term, but yeah. <laughs> it, it was long term. Yeah, but for sure. I had a family member at one point say to us, Mom and Dad, stop. I can't take any more of your stories. Yeah. But, and and it, for us, the lights were like, oh, we're debriefing on family members and they're not prepared for this. Yeah. But we have a need for it. Yeah. So um, recognizing if you need to process. Uh, an event that happened. You don't have to be a missionary or military vet for this. It can yeah. be anything that's happened and you mm -hmm. still need to process it. Yeah. And your friends and associates don't seem to have the capacity to hear it. Mm -hmm. It's probably time to to find someone who wants to do who who advertises or who says that they do briefs debriefs. Yeah. We do it here and we have realized that the capacity we need to explore doing debriefs with way more than just missionaries and yeah military people because anyone who's come out of anything out of the ordinary that was really a shock and a trauma needs a debrief yeah yeah that's really good and i think in the middle of how do you see debriefs happening in the midst of transitions because mm -hmm. i've seen as a bssm student so many of us will be in school and we receive so much freedom and healing and right. we learn so many things about our identity and about the Lord and we're like this is amazing and yes. then we go back into environments that are not where where we found our freedom and we're like how yeah. do you 
how do you live a life of freedom in the midst of a place that you once didn't know freedom? And then how do you see that intertwining with debrief? I think that um, the word resilience comes back up again Hmm. because a debrief is when you have let's say you've gone through something amazing like a bssm experience mm-hmm. you don't it doesn't have to be negative to debrief it hmm. it can be That's incredibly good. positive out of the ordinary and positive and you're now going back into ordinary life and trying mm-hmm. to make sense out of that resilience yeah. says i'm making sense out of that uh season mm-hmm. that event or set of events yeah and i'm getting to where i understand what that was about and I, I have developed a resilience where I'm ready to go into a different future that may look, never look like that again. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I've got a resilience, I've got a hope, and I've got a, mm-hmm. a worldview now that I can go forward with. I'm not stuck. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that you pointed out that it doesn't have to be a negative experience no. to need debriefing. You're right. Yeah. Can you expand a little bit on that? I think often that is the connotation of... Hey, I just I really just need to debrief this and it's it's a heavy thing and it's a weighty thing. Mm-hmm. And so can you communicate just a little bit about how how we can communicate to someone like when to almost change the connotation of the word debrief mm-hmm. of how can I say, "Hey, I really would love to debrief something with you and it not have to sound negative." Right. Do you have any ideas on on that? I think if I can just back up and just say generally our culture says we're not so sure you're worth hearing unless you've got some letters behind your name or Hmm. you stand on a stage and and thousands listen to you at a time. Uh, Those are the people that need to be heard Mm -hmm. and we're watching our phones. We're not speaking into our phones that much. We're mostly Mm -hmm. listening. We're just receiving from yeah. it, right so we all have this need to be heard yeah and with friends that value us mm-hmm. or with the people that just see i want to know your story mm-hmm. i want to see what's unfolding in your life what's god doing with you and yeah. tell me about that amazingly good thing that happened yeah and how does that make sense where you are now because that season's appears to be over yeah. what are you going to do now Mm-hmm. And and I'm not going to feed a bunch of answers to you. Yeah. I'm trying to let you, in an unhurried way, tell me what you're processing internally. What what are you making sense out of this? Yeah. And how are you going to go forward with it? Yeah. And then, for me, it dovetails with Sozo, because then you start to take those questions with the Lord, mm-hmm. and you build even more resilience as you and the Lord have conversations together, and He gives you things to go forward. Yeah. So, it's really going forward is it? is really the goal of this thing. Yeah. Being able to go forward in a really resilient, healthy, hopeful way. Yeah. Whether you came out of an amazing time or a really rough time. That's amazing. That's yeah. beautiful. What you, I think a lot of us are actually debriefing more often uh-huh. than we think we are. We just aren't calling it debrief yet. Yeah. And yeah. so you asked some great questions there, almost unknowingly and subconsciously of, Okay, that was a great thing. How did you come out of that? And questions like that. Right. Can you um, either you can make a list of questions and just say them ones that you often ask. Like, what are questions you often ask people in the midst of debriefing them that we can give people who are listening? Like, these are some just kind of almost general questions that are helpful yeah. in any good or bad debrief scenario. So I think. Um, a couple things would be it's good to ask questions for clarification mm-hmm. but it's not good to ask questions that steer okay like, yeah. here, here's an example someone just came back they spent 10 years in Spain and you go oh my gosh I always wanted to visit Spain and live in Barcelona tell me all about it well that's good because mm-hmm. you're excited but then it becomes about me being entertained mm-hmm. tell me stories that will keep me excited about Spain but that's not what this is about yeah so I want to ask questions like oh what does that word mean oh this is a special word in Spain oh okay so you can ask clarifying yeah. questions that show that you're you're really interested mm-hmm. another kind of question that's really valuable are empathetic questions mm-hmm. and those are questions where 
they may be telling you what happened yeah and at some point you start to ask questions like how did you feel hmm. what was that making you feel when that happened so yeah. when you went to the market and you got robbed and your purse and phone and everything was taken what were you feeling at that time mm -hmm. what do you feel about it now yeah and again if they can sense from you that you're not an investigative reporter and you're not trying to figure out how to preach to them getting yeah. your sermon ready or you're not mm -hmm. Uh, figuring out a fix for them yeah and you're not looking at your watch and checking where the exits are yeah then something amazing happens right there yeah that's so good yeah. that's so valuable in being I think we in the midst of social media and things we've lost our uh, social media is not all bad but I right. think we've lost a bit of our empathy and our willingness and even capability of sitting in an yeah. unhurried way without distractions to ask even realize oh i want to know how you feel yes. and so it's so valuable i think for us to realize even feelings you felt before are still valuable to recognize now mm -hmm. and i think that's part of debrief of what you felt before is valuable now it doesn't have to be defining now Right. but it's valuable to revisit and so that's just it's just golden what and, you're giving us today and, and what can happen then is you can there's an opportunity there where you weren't trying to make this happen but people can start to bring out the guilt that they felt mm -hmm. or the shame or for some reason they've turned this traumatic thing against themselves yeah. and you're you're not trying to dig for that but you're at least giving opportunity yeah. you're inviting them if they want to mm -hmm. if they want to bring out their feelings yeah. you want to hear yeah yeah that's good can you briefly i think in the midst of um talking about questions and listening it can kind of steer if we're not careful into a counseling session you can yes. so can you talk a little bit about what's the difference between debrief and counseling mm -hmm. and how can we resist that temptation to move in one direction versus the other yeah i i'd say the thing i've had to purposely uh do for myself is just say to myself in this session i'm gonna listen <laughs> and yeah. i'm gonna ask questions and i am not going to counsel and so i'm just going to resist this thing to point out where they might be leaving something that isn't true yeah or uh, they could really benefit from my little thing here that, and i'm just gonna i'm gonna be really resistant to do that yeah now there are times when it seems like the holy spirit's saying come on go ahead and say it and i'm yeah. thinking no i'm not going to say it yes go ahead and say it so yeah. those are more rare yeah but if i am committed to here's the thing i like to think about mm -hmm. um you not only have an amazing story from your trip from turkey it's part of your eternal plan mm -hmm. it, you there's a reason why that trip happened and i want to just hear so what was happening in you when in that trip and how does that fit into your your long-range yeah. plans and where you're going mm -hmm. next and where I can you can sense from me I'm really fascinated about who are you mm -hmm. and what is this thing that you and God are are doing together in yeah. your journey yeah. yeah that's amazing this is so good Scott I think I'm learning so much just <laughs> sitting here and listening and it's this is great um so for our listeners is there anything that you if you're like if i could leave them with one thing mm -hmm. um to walk away with a sense of i can know i can be confident in debrief i can be confident that if i need one i can ask for one if you what's your kind of like walk off statement here on the topic of debrief that you want to leave our listeners with today well i would say that we all need debriefing and if you did have something really traumatic happen it's probably normal that you're questioning your motives you're questioning mm -hmm. your heart and the fact that that's happening you belong with all the rest of us yeah and it's time to get a great time of processing mm -hmm. and having someone who really cares about you hear it yeah. where you can just unload it and unpack it in your at your pace at your time yeah. we all need that yeah. You're not unusual if you need that. You mm, belong that's with so us. That's so good. 
we all need it. Yeah, and I think one thing that comes to mind for me is if you are if you're someone who is helping people in debrief, mm -hmm. um, and you are the listener in this situation, and you are struggling to actively listen or ask questions or find space and capacity, ask the Lord, God, yeah. will you give me capacity to listen to this person the way that you would listen to them? Yes. And would you, if I don't really care that much, if I'm honest, God, would you help me care for them the way that you would care for them? And I, it will change I everything. Like Yes. It'll change everything of how we listen because I, agree. I, agree. I need the Holy Spirit to listen to some stories sometimes. And yeah. I know my friends need the Holy Spirit to listen to my <laughs> stories sometimes too. Yeah. And so I agree. when in doubt, ask the Holy Spirit there you for go. help. That's good. And it'll set you up for success every time. And so, Scott, thank you so much yeah, for you. chatting today. This is good. This is so much fun. It I'm was. so excited. Um, if you are interested in receiving a debrief session if you listen to this and you're like wow i really need a debrief session um feel free to contact us at the transformation center tcbethel.com you can find all of our resources um with e-courses and how to sign up for a sozo or counseling or coaching or a debrief session and all of those things you can find more information on our website again tcbethel.com and you can keep an eye out scott is actually creating we're in the middle of really birthing a beautiful e-course mm -hmm. um for how do you walk out your identity and mm -hmm. how do you identify your one degree in destiny your design yeah. your absolute design and so you guys can keep a um keep an ear out for that we'll be posting about that when it's ready and I promise it will be even more valuable than what you've heard today. <laughs> and so, Scott, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, I'm so this excited for this. You're and a great hostess. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> so kind. Yeah. And so, until next time, we'll see you guys soon.